what's up guys lord has in here back with another video what you're looking at is a red bug no wait you're looking at the samsung galaxy s the refreshed version of samsung's base model entry phone in the a series the galaxy a10 in this video we're going to quickly unbox the a 10 s and compare it to the samsung galaxy a 10 and see if that price difference is warranted in terms of specs features and performance but before we start quick word from our sponsors massive thanks to today's video sponsor omar marketplace they actually sent over the galaxy a 10 s which we are reviewing today and comparing it to the galaxy a 10 I'm going to leave a link to Omar Marketplace down in the description below. Go check these guys out. It's at www.oe.co.ke for the best deals in the market right now for your electronics, computers, laptops, phones, everything you might want. They have it. And just a quick mention, there's White Friday and you're going to be getting really crazy deals, really massive discounts on White Friday, every Friday. So make sure you check them out. And if you buy on White Friday, anywhere you are, you get your product delivered to you free of charge so hit that subscribe button please turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any notification when i upload a video please like this video it really helps the channel out share this video with your friends and uh watch this video to the end so new intro <laughs> First up, let's start with unboxing. At the back of this cleanly presented box, you see some of the key features of the Galaxy A10s that include the Infinity V display, a dual camera setup, and a fingerprint scanner. Now, at this point, you might be asking yourself, why is a fingerprint scanner special on this phone? You're going to see why in just a sec. First up, we're greeted with the paperwork, the quick setup guide and warranty card, things people don't read. Next is the phone itself, which we will unwrap, turn on, and put it to the side to boot up. Next, we have the micro USB cable, a standard power brick to charge up the phone, and finally, a pair of headphones. And the SIM ejector tool stuck on the box right here. And that's all you get in the box. At this point also, you have noticed a couple of things. One, no USB Type-C here, and two, no fast charging capability on here. And for the price, that's okay. Now, what you're looking on here on the Galaxy S is a 6.2 inch 720p IPS LCD screen, a gigantic 4000 milliamp hour battery, a MediaTek Helio P22 processor backed up by either 2 or 3 gigs of RAM, dependent on the variant you choose, and all that comes with 32 gigs of internal storage, a 13 megapixel primary camera with a 2 megapixel depth sensor, and an 8 megapixel front facing selfie camera. And just for the sake of detail, the phone does have a plastic body, and uh, we have the black version of the phone. Now enter this guy, the Samsung Galaxy A10. Just a quick brush of a history, Samsung introduced the Galaxy A lineup and to succeed that lineup they brought along the AS series. So you have the A10S, the A20S and so forth. Now having both phones side by side is pretty hard to tell which phone is which since they all look so identical. Here is the A10 cover fitting perfectly on the A10S missing ever so slightly on the camera cutout and the speaker cutout since it has a bottom firing speaker. The A10 has a 6.2 inch 720p IPS LCD screen, a 3400 mAh battery, an Exynos 7884 processor backed up by either 2 or 4 gigs of RAM each with 32 gigs of internal storage, a 13 megapixel primary camera and a 5 megapixel front facing selfie camera. This too has a plastic body. Now on both phones the power buttons are on the right. The volume up and down buttons are on the right side of the standard A10 and they were moved to the left of the A10S. You get a dual camera setup on the A10S and a single camera on the A10. At the bottom of both phones, you get a headphone jack, the micro USB charging port and the microphone. The A10S has a bottom firing speaker and the A10S speaker is on the back of the phone. And of course, the fingerprint scanner at the back of the A10S. In terms of software, both phones do ship with Android 9 Pi straight out of the box with Samsung's One UI running on top of Android. All that is bundled with all the nitty gritties such as the gestures in the dark mode inclusive of the phone software. First major difference you'll notice is the presence of the fingerprint scanner on the Galaxy A10s, which lacks on the A10. It's not the fastest in the market, neither is it the latest, but it does get the job done unlocking your phone when you want to. It does take a second to register your finger and then unlock your phone. However, with the screen on, it does unlock a bit faster. Overall, it is an added advantage over the A10 that just has to do with the native lock mechanism and facial recognition. Speaking of facial recognition, 
thumbs up to samsung for including face unlock on both devices at such an entry level price if you remember my huawei y9 prime 2019 review i was really disappointed that that phone which is way above these two phones in terms of spec and price doesn't have a facial recognition built into it props to samsung for that facial recognition on both devices is also pretty fast fast to set up and fast to unlock although it's a two-step process now for the speakers Both phones have a mono speaker. The SNS, as I've said, comes with a bottom firing speaker compared to the A10 speaker that's rear mounted. Straight off the bat, the A10 is at a disadvantage since the rear mounted speaker gets muffled when you're listening to music with the phone rested on a surface or when you're just holding the phone since the speaker is blocked. In terms of viewing experience, both support content up to 720p resolution max and you can't complain considering what you're paying for. Colors and clarity are good with content being displayed vividly and colors kept correctly. Now let's move to the cameras. The Samsung A10s has a dual lens camera setup at the back, a 2 megapixel f2.4 depth sensor for your portrait shots and a 13 megapixel f1.8 main camera and an 8 megapixel f2.0 front facing camera. The Samsung A10 on the other hand has to do with one 13 megapixel f1.9 camera and a 5 megapixel f2.0 front camera. None of these spots are dedicated wide angle camera on board, so they rely heavily on software to crop the image to give that wide angle shot image. Onto the selfies. Now, the selfies captured on both phones are okay quality, I should say. The difference comes in the color temperatures on both phones and how they process the image. Colors on the A10s are more vibrant compared to the A10. On to the rear camera now. Photos taken on the standard angle are impressive and pleasing to look at. Both phones capture good levels of details, not the stellar performance as you would expect from a, say, a flagship device. I'd personally say the Samsung A10 does a better job capturing the colors as they are. But in terms of, quote-unquote, wide-angle shots, side by side you can see that both fit the same perspective into one shot. A tiny difference might come up in the close-up standard shots where the A10 brings you closer to the object more than the A10s. Overally, there's nothing blown out of the shots and they're pretty clear. In terms of portrait pictures, again, the A10s has the upper hand mainly because it has the second depth sensor lens. I actually noticed issues with the A10s when you launch the camera in standard mode. The crop is in wide mode instead of standard mode and you have to switch to wide angle mode again to kind of align the glitch and then switch back to standard mode for it to actually work. In that regard, the A10s has difficulty staying focused on some objects in the standard mode. Example, this picture of forage here. It really struggled keeping focus on the entire tree and as such, it just blurred the whole picture compared to the A10 that just took the picture as it is. All in all, can we just give props to how cameras in the budget section of phones are getting good. Both phones also don't have a dedicated night mode, so if it's a deal breaker for you, you might want to look elsewhere. Verdict, both the Samsung A10 and A10s are great entry-level budget phones. They will really serve the purpose and performance needed to get you by for the price. Yes, a lot has been slashed off both phones to attain their retail prices. However, there's things that make you look at the A10s and ask yourself if you really need to pay that extra cash for it or just go with the A10 and call it a day. At the same time, there are things on the A10s that are just a must-have for people, making it without a shadow of a doubt the best of the two. Well, I'd say go for the A10s if you want a fingerprint scanner, a larger battery, which let's face it, big is always better, improved camera specs, and more nitty gritties added in just to make the phone better. If you want all the A10s specs, minus the second camera, which I really won't lean on since the A10 does better in some areas of the camera department. If you don't mind the muffled tiny rear speaker and can do without a fingerprint scanner, then by all means have the Galaxy S10. All in all, these are some really good budget phones and I'll say it again, the competition is heating up. So that's it for today guys, thank you for watching this video to this point. Please smash that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell, like and share this video with your friends, leave me a comment below and let me see you in the next one.